Uh, speaking of synergy and influence, I'm extremely pleased that our last uh, speaker is Julia Parker. Many of you know her as probably the most prominent uh, artist in uh, the realm of basket weaving. Uh, she has developed her art through drawing on the art of her own people, the Coast Miwok and the Kashaya Pomo, as well as those of her husband, the Sierra Miwok and the Mono Lake Paiuti. Her works have been uh, permanently located in collections of the prominence of the Smithsonian, and even uh, in the collection, I notice uh, of the Queen of England herself. I, that's quite prominent, I would think, trying to imagine the Windsors uh, admiring your works. And uh, she is also an honorary uh, doctorate from uh, CCA. Uh, her work has uh, been widely distributed. Uh, she is still, with, as an Indian cultural um, specialist, uh, connected with the Yosemite Museum, so I'm particularly pleased uh, to welcome her. She's going to talk in the general area of stories from a Native American elder perspective. So welcome, uh, Julia. Wow, it's great to be here. How many of you are happy? Yeah. Oh. It's wonderful to be here with uh, these wonderful speakers that I've had before me, and I've been sitting there thinking about them. And uh, I, uh, Julia Parker, um, I'm, as he said, Coast Miwok and Kishaya Pomo. Uh, education has been um, uh, in a foster home for about five years. Uh, the uh, last uh, years of my education has been in an Indian boarding school. Where in the Indian boarding school, they said, uh, don't be Indian, don't talk Indian, don't, uh, just, just say your tribe. So I used to say my tribe, not really realizing who I was or where I came from, except my foster mother said, uh, don't forget now, you're a little Indian girl. And of course, it didn't make any much difference to me about you know what was Indian. I was just a little girl. And she always said, take care of your four brothers and sisters, which I did. So in entering, in entering uh, the Carson City Indian School called Stewart, Nevada, I uh, uh, was wondering about my family and you know, where we were going to all go. So we were all separated in different places, small boys building, small girls, intermediate. And of course, I was in a big girls building. So upon going to school, we had, uh, say, a, a semester of, uh, of laundry work, a semester of sewing, a semester of uh, working in a kitchen, uh, a semester of working at offices, and uh, working in the hospital. So uh, the, my favorite place was working in the hospital because I could help the people, the little children. I would help my brothers and sisters when they came in to get examinations taking care of their little feet and taking care of them, giving them vitamins, cod liver oil, and, uh, and it was all good, and you know, it was good health things is what we were doing. A lot of controversial issues have come up about these Indian boarding schools that they, that they, they, did, they did this and they did that, and of course they did take away your language. They wanted you to become like them. So we did, we, we became like them, and so it wasn't, until I met my husband, Mr. Uh, Parker, at the Indian boarding school, and he's been my good friend for many, many, many years. And uh, when we we both graduated from the school, and he took me over to Yosemite, and uh, so I've been in Yosemite for probably about 60 some years. I kind of forgotten, and uh, don't want to even think about how long I've been there. It's just so beautiful there, you know. And uh, so when he took me to his village. Why, his grandmother was Lucy Tellis. She was a world famous basket maker. She uh, made these huge baskets. She, she cooked in baskets. She carried acorns in a cone shaped basket. And uh, she taught me how, she taught me all these things. And she taught me how to put baby in a basket. Now the only person in the Indian village that really didn't think much about Julia was, was the great grandmother. We call her Mua. And she didn't think I was Indian because I couldn't speak my language. But then when she saw the baby in the basket, she sang a song to her, and then she was, uh, then I was accepted in the, in the family. So I felt really good about that. I had known very little about my own family because I was orphaned at a young age. And today I'm happy to say that I found my people 
and um, it's it's a privilege to be working with them because now what I do is what I've learned through my years of traveling around I have brought back to my people uh, the art of basket weaving now when we look at baskets you know we just sort of kind of well just kind of sort of uh, say oh that's a basket but those baskets really have a lot of stories to tell we start in the very center and these are the things that I had to learn about baskets I didn't have very much one-to-one -one, uh, instructional way of making a basket and but I did know that um, I had one teacher who told me how to start a little basket so I watched her very carefully and um, found out that she was using split willow and we talk about the green the word green Indian people have always been green people because we live with the soil we take from the earth with a please and we give back to the earth with a thank you and these are the stories that were given to me like Julia when you collect your willows for your basket you wait for the plants to talk to you you watch them you watch them grow and we, when the leaves turn yellow and fall off it's time to gather also remember now the first frost that come comes along you have to wait because you want the bark to stick on the wood and then then it's time for you to collect the rains come and wash away the fibers and then they're standing there in their beautiful beautiful coats so all these things I have to to remember and I do pass this on to my daughter my granddaughter and my great grand girl and to hundreds and hundreds of people that I speak with when I'm in the Indian Cultural Museum my work there has just been answering questions are you real Indian what are you doing uh, how long does it take to make a basket and I fully understand these questions that these people come in. I've been in, there in, in uh, working there for probably about 45 years. I've kind of didn't even, don't even think about that anymore. It doesn't really matter. It just matters that what you have to say, it comes from your heart. And that in Indian way, you stop, you look, and you listen. And so this is what I've done through my years of, of basket making. And when I first started to make that first basket, it was really a chore because I had really no knowledge of all these things that I'm telling you about now. So I would just sit very quietly and uh, scrape the willows. My teacher had given me some willows. And then I remembered that, you know, she said, now, Julia, we're not going to always be around, so you have to learn. So then she taught me about gathering. And then she said, when you get the willows, you scrape the willows till it sings to you. And they do, they sing to you if you really listen very carefully. As you guide these willow sticks, you, you have to break them in half and they start green. And you must work with the wood when it's green and you take and you'll sculpture it down so it's so flat that it's just like, like tissue paper. And then when you put the fibers in the water, they drink up the water after they've dried for a year, Julia, remember, wait for a whole year before you use your basket fibers and I used to think about how it's going to be so dry but I listened to them put the put the fiber in the water and then one of my teachers told me she said that now Julia you know that's your water and if anybody puts their hand in your water they're taking away your power so I have to watch that very carefully because we all know that water is power so when you reach down and you pull that piece of, of nice, fine willow and you touch it and you feel it, there's a beginning end, there's an ending end, there's a wrong side, there's a right side. Uh, what kind of basket are you going to make? Are you going to make a cone-shaped basket, a twine basket, or are you going to make a circle basket? 